Exactamente. Agradecer a, a mi público, eh, perdona, a mi. Bueno, his public. Lo iba a decir Speaking después, like iba a decir a mi equipo now. primero por siempre estar a mi lado y apoyarme, a mi equipo, a mi familia, todos por estar Obviously, aquí y apoyarme durante toda la semana. Y por supuesto que agradecer a todos los sponsors, que sin ellos sería imposible hacer un, un torneo así. Muchísimas gracias por apoyar el tenis. Y los sponsors, obviamente, también son muy importantes. Y su apoyo del tenis es, obviamente, Much appreciated. Por último, que para mí ganar aquí en Madrid otra vez, eh, la experiencia del 2005 fue inolvidable. Es probablemente la, de las mejores sensaciones que he tenido en mi carrera. En esta final contra Lubitsch y Goy, igual que otra vez aquí otra vez. Madrid. En esta final, con todo este estadio lleno, ha sido mío. O sea que muchísimas gracias a todos por vuestro apoyo, otra vez lo digo, y espero vernos pronto. Okay. Muchas gracias. Different scenario now, but still enjoying being able to win in front of his adoring fans. Señor alcalde, señor presidente, señor secretario de Estado, señor Santana, y por primero quiero empezar a felicitar a estos dos campeones. Lo felicito por el juego. Lo felicito por el fairness que jugaron por el hecho que parecen abonados a esta final. Lo esperamos el año que viene, esperamos que están los dos en el final. Señor Nadal lo ganó este año, señor Federer lo ganó en otro el año pasado. Vamos que vuelven a... Y ustedes todos, lo más de los 50 años donde entró fuerte y salvo. Muchas gracias. Great ambassadors for the sport, and uh, of course, they're the two athletes that transcend it. So much interest when these two play, not only from those of us within the game. Yeah, well, I remember everybody at the Olympics uh, in Beijing last year. Of all the athletes there, these two in particular got the most attention from all the other athletes, which just goes to highlight exactly what you were saying about transcending their sport. These guys are global superstars. There couldn't be a greater accolade, could there, with uh, how many so-called superstars there are at the Olympics. And I remember a nice story from Michael Phelps, who of course made all sorts of headlines out there. He said that the only other person he went up to his whole time at the Olympics was Nadal. He said he uh, met him in the laundry room and he said he was going to have a word with him because he was mix mixing his colours and his whites. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure he does his own laundry that often, because yeah. obviously that's a rookie era. Exactly. Nice moments for the dignitaries as well, the sponsors, uh, all of those associated with the tournament to meet both uh, Federer and Nadal. And I must say, Federer is taking uh, the defeat very well, as he always does. No tears this time around, though, which is good to see. Those look identical, those trophies, is that right or not? No, I was just thinking the same thing. Should he got to go for the, the big one? Something a little bit more glamorous. Yeah, that will take uh, pride of place on his mantelpiece. Uh, all of his trophies are very important, but uh, a little bit more special when you manage to beat Federer in the final. Yeah, I think he'll inscribe that if it hasn't got it on it. Put to in brackets, beat Roger. <laughs> uh, it'll mean a lot going forward. Again. <laughs> Just give us your thoughts, uh, Robbie, on uh, what's been a highly entertaining European play court swing. Well, it's good to see Nadal back to his very best. We were hoping for him to really start lighting things up, and he didn't disappoint us. But uh, let's not forget about the other participants uh, in the clay court season, most notably Fernando Vadesco, who's had uh, a fantastic run of form, and together with David Ferrer, well, they've really been the guys who have dominated a part from Rafael Nadal. Of course, the emergence of Ernest Gobus 
good to see him really starting to fulfill that potential that we always knew that he had. It's finally coming to fruition. It gave Nadal a good run for his money, got the better of Roger Federer. So those are already nice footnotes on a career that is burdening. And uh, what about your thoughts on the French Open? Is it a, a foregone conclusion or not? For me, yes, it is. I don't see anybody beating him. Uh, I think he got a good chance of beating him. Uh, two out of three sets, but uh, over five sets, I cannot see anybody uh, beating that guy. Not even and, uh, Federer. Anybody that uh, we haven't already seen show good form on the clay got a chance of causing an upset? I don't see it happening again. I think he's better scheduled this year. He's healthy. Uh, he doesn't have too many family problems going on. I think the divorce of his parents hurt him. So he is good to go. I think we're looking at the Roland Garros champion. And the knees seem to be a lot better, don't they? Yeah, that's always crucial because movement is such an important part of playing on clay. Yeah, no question about that. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage, not only at the final, but also throughout uh, all of the European clay court events. We've had a lot of fun. The guy with me has been Robbie Koenig. Yeah.